Let's take a look at how to make these different health bars in Gado. Gado? Now I question the way I say things. So I have all of our bars set up here. I'm just going to zoom in, get rid of the output. There we go. So as we saw in the beginning there, we have our basic bar here where we just have um, just the overall or overlaying uh, color for our health bar and that just drops down our second item here we have our back end right just to kind of give uh, a color in the background so we know how much our max is versus how much our current is and then we have our then we have the version where the uh, back color is going to uh, tween down right it's gonna move down smoothly and this uh, this uh, version is popular because it shows you how much health you currently have left after being hit, how much damage that hit did, and we have that nice smooth transition uh, moving down. Right? And we just have that in three different versions. So we have it going from left to right. We could also change that to uh, right to left if we wanted to. And if we move down, we have more of the, we have the same three setups here, but we have more of the Skyrim approach where our bars converge down to the center instead of moving down to one end. And then if you prefer more of a uh, Zelda style, I know Zelda has their, at least their stamina bar, I believe is at the very least is a circular system. I don't know if their health is, but we have that kind of setup going on with those same three as above. Now, how do we actually set these up? Well, for our base bars here. So we're going to look at the, uh, the top bar in the top section middle section and the left circular bar at the bottom so using that basic bar that basic system all we're going to do is this is just a texture progress bar uh, in order to accomplish this now i have all of mine all my health bars in a group that way i can just easily uh, call them just purely for example so you don't need to put them in there um, but for these it's just a texture progress bar and we can see that on the right hand side in the inspector and we can see we have our fill modes here and you can see all your different options for your bars which is fantastic um, i'm using a nine patch because i'm just nine patch because my texture is just one color so it's just a square nine patch allows me to completely stretch it out to fit uh, my needs now textures here is where you're going to look at so under this is where you can place this red section, right? So this is the, like the back plate you can think of. This is what's hiding underneath of your health bar. Um, over would be if you had some kind of plate uh, to lie on top. All right, so if we were to take a look at the health bar here in uh, Blood Rain Betrayal, we have, in this case, I. I don't remember if they have a back plate, then their health bar is red, which makes sense. It's a vampire game, health, blood, makes sense. And then we can see this, uh, this metal uh, shape overlay on top of it all. That would be our over texture. Okay, so that's what we would put inside the over. And then progress would be your actual health, which is uh, our green bars here. Uh, I'm not sure why it's showing up white there. Yeah, but that's no big deal. Um, so the progress is the actual green bar that we're showing. Under is our red back bar. And over would be if you want some kind of uh, health plate on top of it to make it look a little nicer. Usually only for the player uh, in, uh, in the top left corner, of course. All right. So the only thing here is we have our min value, which of course set to zero because that's your lowest health you can have right max value so this would be where you put your player's maximum health and the value is what our bar is currently sitting at so you see if we had 75 out of 100 health we'd be right there if we had 25 out of 100 we'd be down there all right and that setup is going to work for pretty much all of these so our basic bar just has no under texture. Our bar that's a 
slightly uh, nicer looking for a lot of these. It has an underbar as well as our green. And again, that's the same for all of these. And the last one here that we're going to be animating. Um, this is going to be a texture progress bar. And its progress is actually going to be the red bar. And then that has a child of a nether texture progress bar. And that progress bar is going to be our green that is on top of it. Alright. Now, if you're doing this uh, smoother one that moves in, which would be bar 3. So bar 3 here. Bar 3 here. And then our last pie at the end here. So if you're doing that one, um, just make sure that if you update the player's maximum health, uh, make sure you update that value for both of your bars. That's all I'll have to say about that. All right. So for our basic bar here, all we do is inside of my ready function, I'm just setting uh, my bar's value all the way up to the maximum so that I have a full health bar to set things off. And then I'm calling... I'm creating a hurt function. You can call this damage, take damage, deal damage, whatever you want to do. I have one argument of a melt, which is an integer. And I'm just performing a check. So I'm saying if my value is zero, so if my health is already down at zero, then we're just going to return. We're going to skip out, exit out of our function, right? Because you can't deal any more damage to us. There's no point to even try to calculate this. And else, if our health is not at zero, then we're just going to take the current value of our bar and we're going to do minus equals amount. And this is the same thing as writing value equals value minus amount. Okay, so minus equals is just a shorter way of writing that. So if we have a hundred for our value, our bar is completely filled. And then maybe we pass in 20 damage uh, into our hurt function. Then we're going to go from 100 and we're going to drop down to 20, right? Oh, we're sorry. We're going to start at 100, subtract 20, and our health will be set to 8. Now, to keep these consistent, I don't have a set number here. I'm just I'm creating a random number that I'm dealing as damage to all of our bars to keep it consistent. So it's a random amount each time. But that's all you have to do for the... That's all your script needs for the top and middle bar in the first two sections and the middle pie graph here and the left pie graph now if you want the one that's a little more advanced where we have this smoothing going down with our bar in the bottom of our two and the right uh, right pie bar then we're going to need a slight difference in our code if you want to create that and that's where my second script here comes in so remember we're setting our bar to our max health and i mentioned that you need to remember to set your uh, set the other bar to max as well so for that uh we're using get child zero to get our second health bar and we got the same check here so if value is zero then we're just going to exit out function is same hurt the argument of amount passes an integer and we're going to get child zero right that'll be our first item here the first child which is our green bar we're going to set the value minus equals amount and that part is exactly the same as we did previously only we're getting a child instead of ourself now for the red bar uh, the red bar we're going to create a new tween and so we're just going to assign this to a variable called t, create tween. And for this, we're going to call tween property because we're tweening a property on this, right? The value property. We pass in self because the object that this script is on is our red bar. In this case, as a string, we have the property in here, which is a value. And for the starting value, or sorry, not the starting, the final value, we're going to need the value of child zero, which is our green bar. So remember, we've already subtracted that amount to it. We've already updated that value. So we're going to use that value to tell 
our tween or our animation here. Uh, what is the final number we want to get to? And then our last number here, 0 0.5, is how long you want that tween to happen. So if we go ahead and we were to change this to uh, two seconds, for example, we take a look, that's going to be a lot slower uh, to finally tick all the way down. Versus if we had a 0.1 and we take a look, that's going to be almost instant. And that could be what you want. That's just going to be up to your personal uh, choice at that. What you saw in the beginning was 0 0.5 for this. Now, if you want to take this up uh, one step further, because I know some games, um, you actually get take damage. You see the bar or you see the damage amount for uh, maybe a second or half a second, and then it animates down. So if you wanted to do that, and then uh, in order to put that little pause in here, all we're going to do is in between or after we set the value of our green bar. But before we create our tween, we're just going to call a wait. And what we're going to call a wait on or what we are awaiting is going to be get tree dot create timer. And we'll put in a one second pause and we'll do dot timeout. So we're going to wait for that timeout signal, which is going to come from a newly created timer that will last for one second. And then we'll create the tween and we'll animate it down. So if we take a look at that, we're going to have that pause in there. There you go. So if that's something that you're looking for, then um, that's how you would simply tweak that code with that. It's just one line in is all you need to add. So if I were to do this with my own personal numbers, I might do 0.4 there and uh, maybe 0.5 there at most, personally. So I would have something like this. And to me, that looks a little nicer. I might even shorten that down a little more as well. Maybe even a 0.3 uh, for my pause. That's looking a little nicer. All right, but there you go. There's how you can create uh, all these different ones. And the only the difference between our bars in the top bar is left to right. Our center bars are bilinear, left and right. And if you had a, a vertical version, it would be top and bottom for that. And our bars down here at the bottom are going counterclockwise. And if you wanted it to go the other way, of course, just set it clockwise. And then that just means we're going to empty up the other way. I feel like these names uh, for these radios should be a little different, but that's fine. And the addition that you have here in your radial fill um, is you can set the initial angle and it would be fine. So, for example, you can set it at 116. Uh, randomly if we wanted to right and it'll go based off of that starting point so you don't have to start completely vertical and same with your uh, fill degrees here right so if you wanted to make a bar that was or have a radial bar that was maybe half and half um, you can set the fill degrees to 180 and then 180 would be your max uh, or as you can see in the middle one there so you if you wanted to have like some kind of split thing, maybe health is the left half and then magic is the um, right half. You could do something like that uh, with these spill bars. All right, so that's it. That's how you create um, all those different, those three different uh, styles that you could use for health bars. And with that, take care. Have yourselves a good one. I'll see you guys in the next one. If you, there's anything you guys want to see specifically, leave a comment down below. I'll see you next time.